I accidentally swallowed a bunch of Scrabble tiles. My next trip to the bathroom could spell disaster. Today, I'm going to recap a 2023 action thriller film called Shrapnel. The film starts with Sean, a dad who is deeply troubled because his daughter has been gone for three days. He's in Mexico, searching a place filled with abandoned old cars, following a lead that his daughter's car could be there. After searching numerous cars, he discovers his daughter's car in fine shape, but finds no clues except her friend's spectacles. Sean informs the local police about the car, but when he returns, the car has disappeared. A cop named Hector Montoya doubts Sean's account, suspecting he might be lying. Hector warns Sean to leave since he trespassed, which could land him in trouble. Sean resides on a farm near the Texas border. Back home, his elder daughter is angry with him, blaming him for not safeguarding the family. His wife, Susan, attempts to soothe him, yet he remains anxious about their absent daughter. He confides his doubts about the cops to Susan and plans to report to the consulate. The next day, before going to the consulate, he's visited by Max, an old military buddy. Their talk reveals Sean as an ex-colonel from a special forces unit known for intense missions like executing, massacring, and eliminating criminals. Max offers his assistance in finding Sean's daughter, showing real concern for Sean's family. Despite valuing Max's worry, Sean, aware of Max's harsh methods from their military past, chooses not to involve him in the search. Due to his infamous reputation, Sean turns down Max's help, opting to deal with it himself. At the consulate, Sean is joined by the father of his daughter's friend, unveiling that his daughter wasn't missing alone, but with her friend. Sean detailed the events, voicing his doubts about two Mexican cops involved in the case. As a consul from his country in Mexico, Sean was well-versed in the current affairs, especially regarding a gang or criminal organization run by an ex-mercenary named Victor Garza. The story becomes more complex as Sean investigates deeper into his daughter's disappearance. Victor had become the most notorious and respected gang leader in Mexico. The consul, seriously worried, suggested that Sean's daughter might have been kidnapped by Victor's men. Faced with this alarming situation, the consul recommended Sean to come to terms with the reality and abandon the case if he wanted a peaceful life. Yet, this advice only increased Sean's interest in understanding the full danger posed by Victor. The consul described numerous terrible acts linked to Victor, like the murder of an upright police chief, the vanishing of 400 Mexican citizens, and other crimes. These were thought to be carried out by Victor's group, mainly consisting of former mercenaries. The case became a major news story, with the daughter of a former colonel missing near the border. Sean and his wife were suddenly in the media spotlight being interviewed. While his wife cried, Sean showed unwavering resolve, promising his daughter to be strong and wait, as he pledged to rescue her soon by any means. As Sean ventured into a perilous network of crime led by Victor Garza, Filled with hope, Victor, in secret, was watching the news. He realized that one of the girls in his custody was the daughter of a former U.S. colonel. This knowledge alarmed him, understanding it could upset his business ties with some partners in America, especially if Sean intensified his search efforts. Victor, worried about the impact on his operations, acted fast. He captured the two policemen linked to the kidnapping of Sean's daughter, ready to make them pay for their blunder that threatened his business. It turned out Hector Montoya and his partner, who had met Sean earlier, were the culprits of the wrongful kidnapping. Victor scolded them for bringing the wrong girl, knowing the serious repercussions of this error. Without delay, his man killed one of the officers, yet he spared Hector, demanding his help to catch Sean and bring him to Victor. Besides dealing with the policemen, Victor took more drastic measures to protect his interests. He ordered his brother, Carlos, to send their most ruthless mercenaries to Texas with a horrifying mission to wipe out Sean's whole family. After Hector was taken, Victor and Carlos discussed the need to eliminate Sean and his family harshly and publicly. Victor sought to show their power wasn't limited to a small gang. He wanted this brutal act widely reported in the media to instill terror and respect in everyone, including the police, civilians, and even other criminals, at the mention of Victor Garza. As Carlos and his troops headed to Texas, Sean, on his farm, was oblivious to the looming danger. 
Armed with a rifle, he was busy keeping pests away, unaware of Victor's men advancing. Suddenly, noticing a convoy speeding towards him, Sean hurriedly went inside, his face showing urgency, and told his wife and child to hide upstairs, sensing the imminent threat. As the situation escalated, Carlos and his mercenaries began shooting without restraint. The sound of gunshots reached a neighbor who quickly alerted the local sheriff. Interrupting his meal, the sheriff, learning about the danger to a resident, rushed to the scene. Sean, despite his combat skills, was outnumbered as Carlos and his men forced their way into his home. To counter this, Sean broke plates and glasses on the floor, creating a noise-based alarm system to track the intruders. Carlos, by ordering his men to scatter, unknowingly played into Sean's advantage, allowing him to take them down one by one in separate rooms. This tactical mistake shifted the odds in favor of Sean. Had Carlos opted for a more synchronized or destructive entry method, the outcome might have been different. But it seemed Carlos chose a more challenging approach, which worked to Sean's benefit. Upstairs, Sean told his wife and child to escape through a window. Meanwhile, Carlos made Hector Montoya go up the stairs first, unintentionally giving Sean the chance to capture him. Skillfully, Sean managed to get his family out of the house just as the sheriff arrived. The sheriff was shocked to find a headless body in one of the vehicles and soon got into a gunfight with Carlos's men coming out of Sean's house. Using this chaos, Sean hurried his family away from the scene. In a desperate move, he sped away, witnessing the sheriff's tragic end, which led Carlos to increase his chase. Sean, though having escaped the immediate threat, couldn't ease his mind as Carlos and his persistent team kept up the pursuit. In a daring move, Sean stopped his car and opened fire on Carlos's mercenaries. This surprise attack threw Carlos's dozen men into disarray, leaving only Carlos standing, regretting not having more backup. Despite being outgunned and apparently at a disadvantage, Carlos maintained his defiance, refusing to reveal where Sean's daughter was. However, his arrogance faltered when Sean, driven by resolve, shot him in both legs and arms. After obtaining the vital information, Sean ended Victor's brother's life. Now close to rescuing his daughter, Sean hesitated to involve his family further in the perilous situation. Ensuring their safety, he moved them to a secure place and sought extra help. He contacted his old friend Max, accepting his earlier offer of aid. Max, eager for action, arrived quickly with specialized gear in his car. Meanwhile, Victor was restless, unable to contact his brother. He sensed the likelihood of an emotional crisis, bracing for Sean and Max's ruthless approach. As they neared Victor's hideout, the air was tense with the expectation of a fierce clash. Arriving, they efficiently took down every guard, leaving Victor, the leader of Mexico's largest cartel, stunned. What once seemed like dominance and strength now appeared weak, as Sean and Max powerfully fought through his men. Victor's bravado collapsed. With unwavering determination, Sean and Max reached the place where Sean's daughter was being held captive, ready for the final confrontation. The weak guards at the location were easily overpowered by Sean and Max. After locating his daughter and her friend, Sean, having achieved his goal, handed over the remaining tasks to Max, who was known for his harsh interrogation techniques. Victor Garza was in a critical situation, needing to confess quickly before Max ended him brutally. The following morning, Max carried Victor's head, planning to display it by the roadside as a macabre warning. Sean, having endured a harrowing experience, finally felt a sense of relief as he was reunited with his family. In the joy of this moment, he chose to shave off his mustache and beard. With the threat gone, they could now anticipate a future free from the shadow of danger. If you enjoyed this video, don't be shy to hit the like button, and if you disliked it, hit the dislike button twice, just to be sure. It would be best if you watched the whole movie. Thank you very much for watching. Please subscribe for more videos like this.